Welcome to the Lacoste Cycling Club and the 2023 Trans Pyrenees. It's 1,050 kilometers of cycling, 33 mountain passes, and 25,000 meters of elevation. It's Saturday, it's 6 p.m. We have two hours until the start. We are on the start line in Lanka on the Mediterranean coast awaiting a 1,050 kilometer bike ride up to the north coast of the Atlantic in San Sebastian. Check out the locations on the map right now. Tom riding in the solos to my right, Sam riding as a duo with me to my left, and around 300 other competitors, people after an experience, a challenge. We have around five minutes until we are escorted out of town by the police. We have, I think it's a nine kilometer neutralized ride out of town to keep everyone safe. And then hopefully once that's out of the way, any mechanical issues and things like that will have been sorted and the race begins properly. We have officially started, the neutralizer's over. The police have pulled off and the camera van is speeding up. It's a quarter to one in the middle of the night if that wasn't obvious. We're 100 kilometers in, which makes us a tenth of the way. Uh, which also means we're about 10 kilometers from where our strategy will probably differ from everyone else's and we intend to sleep. But right now, let's continue enjoying this gravel road. It's actually a normal road with a bit of surface dressing. But it's making midnight entertainment. It's 10 past one morning we are 110 kilometers in and this is our clever little tactic we hope is to sleep early before fatigue really kicks in as in who normally rides all the way through the night and we're hoping then that throughout the daytime we have a little bit more energy to make good progress and recover overnight to then ride well again tomorrow sam's found this little well i think he's gone to check that we can actually stay here it's um in a place called La Bastida. It's quite nice. Now we're about to put the bin bag on the floor. I think today's really set the, the scene for how hard to ride, how hard not to ride, when to make the most of stops and things. And in some ways, I think today might be the hardest day, but accumulative fatigue will decide that, I think. The nice thing about day one was because we started in a village on a Saturday, we could get loads of supplies ready for the Sunday. It did mean we had to carry them overnight, but it meant we could have a good breakfast on Sunday morning. How did you sleep, Sam? Yeah, not too bad. We had a couple of visitors last night. And then just continued then to snore for about two hours and then left. So, you know, we were, we were grateful when they left and we could have more sleep. It's actually been really quite hard to get going on day two. Got to sleep at about 2 a.m. Woke up after seven, miraculously, and then it took a while to make coffee and get packed up. But we are moving now. Time for some quick adjustments. How's your fatigue? The comfort in your range of motion, range of movement, definitely changes. And I'm no longer that happy with my saddle height. So we're gonna drop it off a little bit. We are currently just around 800 meters, which is good. It's quite high up. We've done a lot of climbing so far. But the bad news is today's stage, or what we've created as a stage, tops out over 2000 meters. So we have a long way to go yet. In fact, where we are right now, it doesn't even show up on the graph as a elevation gain. That's in context how much higher it's going to be. We are into the really challenging climbs here. Currently at 1150 meters. And this climb tops out at just over 1800. I'll read out the names of what we've done when we make it to the top. But for now, it's just finding that rhythm. High zone one, low zone two, a cadence that's not too heavy, but Equally, you're never revving too high. 
mainly keeping an eye on heart rate and the temperatures because actually yeah fatigue is important to avoid but heat exhaustion and potential heat stroke is much more severe than tired legs so just need to be aware of that as well these climbs are proving to be a real lesson in efficiency you really notice that you make a single effort it's going to take you a long time to recover from it even more so than any other point on a bike. Partly because of the elevation, partly the temperature, the accumulated fatigue, but you really notice that any gradient that kicks up, if you accelerate and you try and maintain the same cadence, you're really going to pay for it. And the best thing is just to ease off a little bit, keep the power the same. Sure, the torque numbers will go up, but not as much as if you push on. Most of this is done in first gear, and it's just feeling the road and trying to find your own advantage on some of these climbs. Our first climb over 2,000 meters. 10 k's to go. I might sound energetic, but it's really hard. We stopped for lunch and that was really helpful. I make up a lot of ground on the descent. It's one of my favorite things, which means I can also ease into the climbs. Sunday was a challenge. This is day two. It was really hot, up to 35 degrees, and there was a good 100 kilometer period where we weren't able to stop and get water or food. When we got to a village where we could have lunch, all of the cafes and restaurants had closed at 2 p.m. on a Sunday in France, but luckily the village shop was open. At the end of day two, I think it had been harder than any of us expected. So once we had arrived in Axel Thames, we decided to stop the day a little bit early. We knew there was nowhere to stay indoors in the next town, so that would have been another night on our cold, hard floor outside. So we just took the decision to find a cheap apartment. We had a really big pizza, and that made that night really good. We were able to recharge and actually wake up on day three feeling quite good. So this is technically day three now. We're in a beautiful little town called Axe of Thames. It's, uh, it's just after six. We were meant to leave at six, 6.14. It's a theme. Everything's slightly behind schedule, including our performance so far. But we've had a good night's sleep, I think. I speak for myself, obviously. Tom and Sam are hopefully on the way. We are 40k behind our what I felt was a good schedule for yesterday. But if we're leaving slightly earlier before it gets warm, it's significant, significantly cooler today. Here they come, I can hear shoes on the ground. We're gonna ride 40k, roughly, have breakfast, and then set about the rest of the day. The goal today is to try and do 12 hours of riding. Just have to see how far we get and then reassess, constantly reassess, that's all you can do. We, we got here yesterday and booked an apartment and split the cost three ways, that makes it super cheap. So if you're gonna do things like this actually, it's really beneficial to do it in a big group. Sure, that means you can't ride to your own, your own energy levels as much as you might like, but it means that any shared costs are so much, so much more affordable, so much cheaper, which is nice. I look tired. I feel tired, but that's okay. I think if you're gonna ride seven and a half hours through the mountains, you're going to feel tired. How's it going, Tom? Good, good, good. I'm very happy I slept. Um, we had an apartment and not a well. That's generally ideal. Uh, but I think, yeah, yesterday reframed my definition of hard in cycling. I don't think I've ever had as tough a day ever on a bike. I think to then it's mentally completely lost it. And also physically with uh, 32 degrees in the climb. Like, yeah, if I hadn't been for other cyclists, I would have, I would have actually not walked up, I think. Uh, and I've got you, and I've got you. We're gonna roll out, nice and slow, steady, calm. And Sam's thoughts? Um, yeah, after yesterday, it can only get better. <laughs> <laughs> it was dark, but you know, we'll, we'll take it on. It's a bit cooler tonight, on this morning. Well, that's a real change in the weather. It's, it's wet. It's very, it's falling from the sky. 50% chance of rain for half of the stage. Our stage, our 260k breakdown. And it's here, it's, it's cold. It's about 14 degrees, but it feels cold. We've just come down at the center. Into the clouds, without a doubt. This is the hardest climb so far. It's not actually very long. It's only 4k, I think. I'm currently pedaling. 39 rpm in first gear doing five kilometers an hour 260 watts and 
over 60 newton meters of torque most of the time by the looks of it it's a real grind the average gradient is something like 13 percent and you can feel every one of those it's wet trying to stay in you know reasonable condition it's not cold going up it will be cold going down there's someone walking just ahead of me and I honestly think walking at this moment in time is probably not a bad idea it's uh, slow going I have a 3630 chain set for context but it's just one of those climbs you have to just settle in you're not going to go any faster you just have to hope for the best we've done 68 kilometers today so far and it's 1800 meters of elevation so far and it's without the without a doubt the toughest start 1200 meters of elevation right now currently 12 percent 12.5 it's very hard but at least we're not currently getting drenched like we were before You make it that. Uh, drop a chin. No, we're all good. Ah, uh, yeah, it was exactly sketchy. Uh, I think saying that that was paved uh, or tarmac is a bit of an understatement. Uh, I think there is parts that are tarmac. I think there's even larger parts that are just gravel. It was, it was a bit of green laning, wasn't it? I mean, yeah, you literally just as you pull the camera out. Nearly watched me lose the front wheel going through that gravel on that last corner. <laughs> so you're, you're going to have caught something spectacular instead. You've just got mediocre me complaining about the lack of grass in the middle of the road. Or oh, too much grass in the middle of the road. Something of note, we've got a puncture. When I say we, I don't mean me. <laughs> Come on, let's yeah. see the sealant time. Apparently. <laughs> the spray of shame. I've lost quite a bit. Here we go. go. I have a pump if you want to know. I don't really... You know what's funny? It's done its job. I've never actually had a puncture with tubeless. So, that could be fun. We have our first real crisis of direction. Fair to say today has not gone to plan. We were then directed to go up here. No explanation for it. Today is one of those days just need to get through the day. That's it now, isn't it? Just. If we get to the end of the day, it's, it's a, not a bonus, it's just a necessity. And then we can think about making more progress again tomorrow. It's been a real adventure though, I would say. And spirits are high in the camp. I think that's the Haribo. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. We have eaten and the lights are going on and we'll, we don't know what we're doing. We have no plan. Good luck. But at least, even if we don't know what the plan is, we're not the only ones. We'll see how far we get. We discovered this sort of village pub in the middle of the mountains. We were called in by some other riders that we'd crisscrossed on the ride. And Tom serenaded us with a little bit of guitar, a little bit of piano and a little bit of singing. The singing was particularly awful by the rest of us, but it was very enjoyable. If it hadn't been for the lady opening up her, her back garden, her village pub, we're not really sure what it was. We know that we had to become members before we could order anything to eat or drink. If it hadn't been for that, we probably would have missed an evening meal that night. What a way to start the fourth day, straight up a 20 kilometer mountain. 
1700 meters and something at the top into the clouds again Five years to the day since I last crested the pay resort. It was nice to be back, but it's nicer to be gone. kilometers at five percent. Genuinely one of the most enjoyable climbs so far. Possibly because it's one of the first times we've had a real view. de Tourmalet. It's a long one. It's actually, it's not as good as the Col d'Aspan. I'm not going to start reviewing these climbs, but it's quite a main road. The gradient's fine, it's rhythmical. We have no views, so I think that probably adds to the bias. It's a lovely kind of, it's very eerie. can't even see the vehicles on the other side of the road. We're going to go full lights on, full winter nighttime mode. Winter mode? Nighttime mode. 11 degrees C. Still very humid indeed. Stuff just appears and disappears out of nowhere. No, there's a huge building there. I think the Tour de France is coming through here and like what? Well, I mean it's here, look! Look! Mercy Tour de France for three years of partnership, Shimano. Oh, okay. Hey guys! Hey guys. How's it going? You guys, awesome. You've done a good job here, this is good. Three more Ks and then you had a gold. Alright, it's a tank it. Let's get that. You might just look into the camera. So we're at the top of the Tourmalet. We've climbed, I don't know how long it was, well over an hour. It was quite slow going to be really honest, in the thickest fog I've probably ever seen. And just as we started to arrive at the summit, it all cleared. And it's like watching the most beautiful sunrise. It's really beautiful now that the clouds are rolling out and the valleys below are revealing themselves. I think today's probably not gonna go much further. I feel we could push on and do one more climb, but equally, I'm not alone. Um, and by stopping now, that means that everyone's fresher tomorrow, which hopefully is a good tactic to get us into San Sebastian. A day behind the schedule which I'd hoped for. We're quite a few kilometers behind where I'd like to have been. But again, that's, that's the reality of an event. You have to be adaptive to it, don't you? And we have been. We've stayed and stopped earlier than we've needed to it sometimes. We've slept in a band hut last night. It's just the way it is and being adaptable seems to be the key of endurance cycling. So on day four, we woke up in a band hut again, another night on a cold concrete floor, which wasn't the most comfortable thing I've ever done, but using the, the insulated emergency blanket definitely made it a little bit more, more bearable than the first night. We then had some really big climbs and we finished on top of the Tourmalet. 
The day was made a little bit easier because we were able to start with a good breakfast at the local bakery. And these things are essential on a route like that, just knowing where you can find something to eat that's of reasonable quality and reasonable quantity as well. And again, it's always better if you can keep the cost down because over six or seven days, it does start to add up. Already up into the clouds. And after a long valley road, we finally start the Col de la Trousse. And you can see it kicks up very quickly. Top of the Col de la Tremus. I'm sure I pronounced it badly. This is the highest point on the entire ride. And we are a good way through now. That's hard. 2,090 meters here. We've not actually had breakfast today yet. Just a few snacks on the way up. 623 kilometers done. There's a few more to go than I might like. As we get to the top of the Col de Sulor, we've finally seen the vultures, which I've been really excited about. I'm not sure why. It's just something majestic about a bird of prey, especially when its wingspan's over over three meters. One thing you really notice is how normalized any situation becomes. We're at 1500 meters and we still have 200 meters of elevation to gain, but you sort of start to accept, oh, it's only 200 meters. It's not a lot. Everything is put into perspective by the size of these mountains, which at home, if you ride a 200 meter climb, it's a big climb. Sunny, even in the tide. A little summary of today as we approach the hotel then. 222 kilometers so far. Not entirely sure how far it is to go. I thought we may have already reached it. 6,700 calories and approaching 5,000 meters of elevation. It's actually been the fastest day. Nine hours and 45 of riding time. 133 average heart rate. 22.9 kilometers an hour, which on this terrain so heavily laden, I think is acceptable.
After the freezing cold descent of the Tremoose, it was then a very, very long day. We actually had quite a transitional section on this ride where we had a long valley road, which I absolutely loved because it was for the first time we could actually spend any considerable time in the aero bars for comfort, but also it meant we could make a little bit more progress and we probably covered around 35 to 40 kilometers quite quickly on that day. The end of day five was really tough. We had some really tough climbs coming in the latter end of the day and I completely miscalculated how far it was to the hotel at the end of that stage. Could this be the final day? I think I hope so, but at the same time, you don't really want this to stop, do you? If you could ride your bike every day, all day, you'd quite happily have that continue. We are in the Basque country, we have 220-ish kilometers to go to the finish. It's going to be hilly. It looks like the profile is easier than it really will be, I think is the best way of describing what today has in store. Like the road surface just is unrelentingly unsmooth at the moment. It's not, it's really hard to describe this. We've been over some immaculate tarmac where you barely have to pedal to maintain momentum, but here it just is a little bit harder. The imperfections in the road, they take energy and ultimately energy on day six of this. Oops. Not in uh, sparing volumes, but we're about 10 minutes away from leaving. How's it going, Sam? Yeah, good, ready for the final day. How nice was this, this little place? Yeah, perfect. Little countryside retreat, look at that. Three of us, beautiful times. Another beautiful peak, 1500 meters and a bit. The last time we go over 1500 meters, two climbs remain over a thousand meters. And once again, we've received no view. so far we have 90 something k to go as you can see we just on the side of the road somewhere You're in the Basque country it's dark up ahead showing some biscuits it's gonna be dark it's going to be dark when we finish we're determined to finish together because we think that seems like the right thing to do the rain is coming I think it's gonna be it I think we're gonna ride into the rain all the way back to San Sebastian which is a little bit of a shame. Feels like the weather's chased us all the way on this ride, actually. A beautiful first evening and then every day since then, up into the clouds. Not a lot you can do. We've made it to the Atlantic, almost six days to the minute. Jake's about the final climb, you couldn't make it up. Tom has suffered his second puncture. Top of the Jake's above. Big U turn, head back down, and finish the Trans Boonies. Oh, what an adventure! It's not necessarily the most underwhelming experience getting to the finish and all of a sudden just disappearing into the night, but it's certainly, certainly different to what I was expecting. Even though I've been told that actually for some people, the appeal of this event and events like this, ultra endurance events, is 
that there is no huge fanfare at the finish. You know, the celebration really comes from within, from achieving that personal challenge that you set out to achieve. Maybe you exchange some stories at the finish, but ultimately you get given your bag and you're sent on your way back home.